Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's, um, it's a real, real pleasure to be here. Um, I guess before I um, uh, kick off, and actually so many more people here than the last time I was here, Paul, so again, uh, thanks to Cobweb and the, and the great continued partnership we um, have with them and, uh, and the rest of the Microsoft business. I've got a chunk of my team here today because Paul and the team kindly uh, lent their offices to us, actually, for running a leadership meeting today. So if the Microsoft people can just put their hands up, they're still here. So if uh, any questions for Microsoft afterwards, then uh, we have a bunch of us around. So... Uh, um, so firstly, I'd just get, like to get a sense of the audience. Um, who in the room would consider themselves a partner of Microsoft? Do business with Microsoft? Okay, cool. Okay, and then sort of an end user or interest or, you know, anyone that might be a consumer of technology from a customer point of view is probably the rest of you. Okay, cool. So it's sort of... Yeah, and Alex, you're probably somewhere in between. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. I just wanted to get a sense of, of the audience, and I'll talk about some of the trends. Um, um, it was interesting hearing many of the anecdotes, um, and actually 1996 was around the time I joined Microsoft, scarily. So I've seen um, a great deal of change um, in the way that technology is used, how businesses are innovating using technology, um, and many about the trends and, and how customers are starting to use it. Um, so much of the, you know, for all the passion that we have for technology and all the different products we bring out and all the different products that many vendors bring out, um, the thing that makes the biggest difference um, in all technology projects and all implementations is people. Um, so whether you're Watson or any of the other characters that, that you made reference to, you know, 70% of projects are successful uh, because it's down to leadership, culture and people. Um, so I wanted to talk today a little bit about uh, the themes and trends that I see in people being liberated uh, with technology, and that's going to be the theme of the uh, 10 minutes I have to talk today. So if we um, talk about, uh, you know, the theme of cloud, I think, you know, the fact that all of you have shown up today is probably because you're either passionate about cobweb, you're passionate about technology, or you're sort of curious about, uh, about cloud. Um, and whether it was back to 1996, um, uh, I guess when I joined Microsoft, they weren't talking about cloud then. Um, but if you think about the, uh, the trends of, oh, it's going to replace um, everything or you know, you look at the different ways that people talked about cloud, I think to start with, um, perhaps not back in 1996, but there was definitely a big um, buzzword around cloud, probably around the time, Paul, that you had the innovation to, uh, um, to set up Cobweb as a business. Uh, and I know you've been a big believer in, um, in the future of cloud for many years. But you take a look at some of the quotes, you know, you just type the word in, you'll get lots of opinions, lots of impressions, lots of different vendors having different points of view, Lots of people persuading you, you should do this versus you should do that. Um, and I guess part of it is around how do you decipher all of this to make sense of what this is going to mean for you, whether you're a partner trying to figure out where are you going to make money uh, and grow your organization as a tech company, or whether you're a consumer and user of technology, what's this going to mean for your business? Are you going to find more customers? Um, are you going to grow your bottom line, etc.? And what's that going to mean to you? Um, so the, the real theme here is, you know, really how cloud is liberating people. Um, if I think back to uh, 1997, when I was a lot younger, um, when I took the time, you know, and when I joined Microsoft, certainly the way we use technology then is so, so different um, to the way that we use it. I mean, I run a, a pretty big business for Microsoft, and all of that business I'm able to run from my mobile phone, uh, which, you know, if I think about... Um, all of you, you know, 20 years ago or whatever, you wouldn't have probably started your day with a mobile phone. I bet all of you are either tweeting now or you certainly started life this morning um, checking your text messages, your tweets, your emails, etc. Um, if I think about um, some of the trends, um, I wanted to talk about a customer I spent some time with um, last week. I won't say who they are because we're in the middle of uh, doing some business with them. But it was, um, it was an insurance company, and this was uh, what was on the wall when I went into their boardroom. It was a very uh, traditional boardroom. And I hadn't seen a boardroom like this for a, I mean, for a really long time, I hope, because this, this company was established in the early 1800s. And these were pictures of all of their previous chairmen that went all the way back. Um, and it made me think, I asked a lot of questions about the culture of the organisation. This organisation, a uh, very traditional company, looking at how they're going to transform the insurance services that they offer um, to their customers. Their customers happen to be doctors, dentists and surgeons. 
um, who actually are very tech savvy. And so the thing that they talked to me about was they are wrestling with how to innovate, uh, change their business process, how cloud is going to play a really important role with that, and how that's going to basically change their business processes. But they were worried about the people impact of that. Um, they talked about their average salesperson, it taking 10 hours in business process operations and administration to process an order, and they're hoping to get that down to three. Um, and I just wonder, this is uh, uh, um, uh, Dr. Lewis, um, one of their uh, previous chairmen from 1860 uh, to, 19, to 1873. And, um, and I wonder what he would have made of, uh, of what is going on now. We did spend some time thinking about how impressive his beard was and what was the style of shaving at, at the time. Um, but we digress. Um, so I think, you know, if you think of the role of all of you as leaders or managers or motivators of people, um, just how you have to adapt and change to take advantage of technology and how you're going to both inspire people, perhaps of an older generation, perhaps not as old as uh, Dr. Lewis, um, but also for the next generation of, um, of people that are coming through. Uh, yesterday, I was with a uh, civil engineering firm who, again, were also talking about how cloud is going to have an impact on their business and how actually the fact that they had not moved forward as fast as they wanted to with technology uh, was having an impact on their ability to attract talent. And they'd made an investment in a graduate program only to see so many of their graduates leave. And I spent some time asking him, well, why is that? And he said they're frustrated with the technology we've got. And I was like, well, uh, we can help you with that. But it's just interesting that actually it's not just about, you know, tech for tech's sake. It's really about how you're going to make people, uh, you know, inspire them, uh, both the next generation of talent, but also the people that you have within your organisation. This is actually a real picture from a real customer that I visited recently. Um, I, I definitely won't say which customer this is. Um, but this is a, uh, a financial services, a uh, small financial services advising uh, organization. <laughs> I, I, I asked if I could take a picture. They, they said it was fine, but they promi I promised I would not share the name of the company. But the carpet, for starters, was, was quite impressive. So here I was trying to inspire them about the future of technology, the impact of social media, the impact of big data, how they can use it to empower their people and their organisation. And then she showed me this room. Um, and I was like, wow, well, <laughs> I start with this. So not only was it, um, you know, I love the servers on top of the tea towel or whatever it is. Um, you know, you, I mean, I'm sure, Alex, you will talk about <laughs> compliance and security. And I'm sure we'll make an introduction <laughs> at some point to, uh, um, to them. But I, I asked them how they uh, really focus on which customers... Um, they're learning from and actually how they're going to grow their business, where to target, where to focus, etc. Um, and they, you know, we concluded that they definitely needed some help with how they were going to um, how they were going to take advantage of that. But I think all organisations need to be more agile. <clears throat> But I guess the challenge we all face, whether you're a technology partner or you're a customer, is like if you're in a situation like this, where do you start? How do you move forward, etc.? Um, and I guess you know part of our job at Microsoft is to help uh, and inspire people about what's possible, uh, because so often, and this company was a good example, they kind of felt comfortable staying doing what they were doing because they were afraid about what to do next. Um, also, you know, certainly in the time that I've, um, I've worked for Microsoft, this kind of real-time working, anywhere working, um, has definitely become a bit of a buzzword in the industry. And it's something that customers look at um, for how are they going to empower their staff to work in a more effective way. Um, you know, we had the pleasure of using the facilities here today. It was, everyone had access to all the information. They didn't have a problem with working anywhere. But certainly when I started my career, this concept of working in a little cubicle with this desk thing around you and, you know, you had to sort of put your head above the thing, hello, um, to speak to your colleague. Um, you know, such thing as kind of empowered conversations on link or federated conversations with your customers, suppliers, partners, etc. Um, and I think that's another thing where, you know, whether you're a small business or a big business, your ability to kind of manage your supply chain, um, manage your business overseas, etc., is something that just wasn't possible. So you can be a small business and really look like a big business. Um, and that's, where, that's the power that technology brings, and we want to just inspire customers um, to do more of that. Um, certainly, I talked last time I was here, actually, for any, any of you that were here, certainly the theme of last time was really about social and networks. I mean, I think the, 
uh, the power of social networking, as the little screen popping up there is testament to, the way people get information now and the way they make decisions um, has changed phenomenally. Um, and the way that people hire people, I mean, certainly um, LinkedIn has had a big, big impact on that. Um, and as Microsoft, we probably make about 60% of our hiring through either networks or social media now versus, you know, you, you take it back to certainly when I joined, it was a very traditional recruiting process that we would have gone through. Um, and so, you know, business is done through the power of networks and actually whether it's tools like Yammer um, that we have, we believe very passionately um, that that's a way of building, uh, building business relationships. I mean, Chris, who's here from my team that runs our corporate accounts business, which is managing my, some of the larger customers for Microsoft, many of his sellers are now uh, driving most of their new business relationships through LinkedIn, through other social media, uh, th social media selling. And we believe that's going to be very powerful for how uh, business is done in the future. And then we need to empower customers to make sure that they've got the technology uh, and the confidence to be able to, uh, to be able to drive that. Certainly business is being reinvented and certainly technology has played a big, power, uh, big role in that. Uh, the number one hotel by bookings uh, worldwide, you might think it might be Hilton or Sheraton or any of the big hotel brands, is actually Airbnb. And you think that was a startup, um, you know, not long ago. Um, and, and take the uh, taxi rank. I think if for those of you that have, uh, I was born and raised in London, you think about the tradition of a black taxi and how that business model has been utterly turned on its head, not just in London but in other cities. Um, through, um, you know, through Uber, etc. So you kind of think technology is, uh, is sort of liberating uh, entrepreneurs and, and other businesses to set things up, but also to really challenge um, uh, existing, uh, existing providers. And so I think as leaders, we've got to really think about how we embrace that um, in a different way, because you can never be settled. And I guess, you know, Microsoft is a good example of this. We can never rest on our laurels to say, we have been a big market player, therefore we will always be a market player. And we've had to challenge ourselves to say, how are we going to continue um, to innovate, uh, both with technology, but also in the way that we service our customers and partner with our partners. Um, so in closing, uh, an old quote um, um, from Socrates, um, and it's really about um, how we are all empowered to make sure that we can spot um, the change that's coming. Um, I think for those of you that sometimes, you know, I manage a, a large organisation of people and you deal, with, you deal with the fear of change a lot. Um, and I think one of the things I try with the people that I manage is to empower them by making them believe that change is always possible, not to be afraid of change. And actually, if you can inspire that in yourself, then you'll inspire that in the partners that you work with and in the, in the customers that you get to serve. So uh, I want to thank you for your time uh, this afternoon, and I look forward to hearing uh, the rest of the speakers. Thank you. Thank you.